Mm. Wait, why'd you put that in? On March 8th of 2019, Captain Marvel hit theaters. In much the same way that a large turd might be dropped from a passing albatross onto the freshly cleaned hood of a Mercedes Benz, so too did Captain Marvel drop into theaters. I've never seen so much hate and vitriol for a movie in such a long time. I don't know, uh, Ghostbusters and The Last Jedi? Those come to mind. Man, now that I think about it, there were a lot of stinkers recently. Let me see, last year we had the Cloverfield Paradox, The Predator, A Wrinkle in Time, Robin Hood, Slender Man, uh, Mortal Engines. God, that was awful. Holmes and Watson? Man, there were a lot of crappy movies last year. And those are just the ones that I remember. Yeah, Captain Marvel is really, really despised because it's one of the worst movies that's probably ever been made. Certainly one of the worst that I've ever seen. And it's fundamentally broken at basically every level. But surely TLJ takes the cake on most hated movies of late. People are still hating on this movie for the dumbest reasons now. Still hating for the dumbest reasons now. What an odd sentence. And it came out months ago. Spider-Man's about to come out. Spider-Man. Wow, Spider-Man's coming out. That's crazy. Now, this was made before Spider-Man Far From Home released. That's the Spider-Man movie I assume he's talking about. But, let's stop for one second here and think about it. Why would you guys talk about a movie that's been out for a while, that we have all the reviews for, all the articles about, all of the footage, Right? We have the whole movie in all of the scenes, and now we have all the deleted scenes as well. All of this material by which we can make discussions from. Okay, right? Spider-Man, though, we've got... what? I mean, at the time that this was made, we had some trailers, you know, little teasers to go by. Ooh, speculation. Yeah, that's worthy of some discussion, sure. But the way that Captain Marvel was pushed, and the way that Google altered search results on YouTube, the Disney influence that saw thousands upon thousands of reviews deleted, the shenanigans concerning movie tickets and theater seating, this movie was the kind of brow-raising cinema conspiracy generator that got lots of noggins jogging. And of course, the movie itself was the cinematic equivalent of an exploding porta potty at the Tucson International Burrito Festival. Captain Marvel is one of the most quintessential, terrible films of our generation. You know, I guess, I, I don't script these really, I just sort of go with the flow. I haven't really discussed why this film is terrible. I sort of just assume, because my audience isn't fucking stupid, that you guys know that this film's terrible, especially if you've seen it. But for those who haven't seen it, or who saw it and for some reason don't think it's awful, or think it's decent or average, or, or hey, maybe you think it's a good movie. Well, if you got some time to spare later, then I would highly recommend that you watch one of my buddy's videos on it, Mahler. So Plank then becomes godlike. She glows and destroys everything in her path. It's extremely nail-biting once again. Like, she had to take the patch off to prevent it from limiting her, right? Oh no, that was just metaphor or something, because the real-world patch just explodes. I'm not kidding. This happens. It just explodes on her neck. Her belief in her own power overpowered the six-year-long power limiter, meaning that this is a power limiter that only limits the subject's power if they believe their power is limited. Who wrote this? <sighs> you might notice that this video is almost two hours long. Yeah, that's because Captain Marvel is fundamentally broken in practically every way. Enjoy. Wait, what was the point of this? Oh yeah, that's right, Spider-Man was coming out. Spider-Man, yeah, no, no, we are no, no, so no, proud of you. Guys. Guys. Such I guess it's a prediction. That's an amazing thing about Spider-Man. Wow. We're still talking about Captain Marvel. There were these new deleted scenes that started coming out, and I really enjoyed them. I thought they were good. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I really enjoyed them, but they were fine, I guess. They were okay. I wish they were in the movie because they gave uh, Carol Danvers, I feel, a bit more character. That's my opinion, but there was one deleted scene. Twitter, sometimes people just disagree, you know? Sometimes they just don't like a movie, and you know, sometimes they just don't like women. Ooh, 
boy, 39 seconds. I don't know if that's a record, but that's how long it took for him to pull the you're a misogynist card. You nailed it. We hate women. You found us out. We've been discovered. Our secret is revealed. We just hate women. That two hour critique video, eh, we just hate women. The plot contradictions, the story issues, character inconsistencies. Look, Brownie Baby, this film's an absolute disaster. I can't stress just, just how much this film breaks down at the most fundamental levels. But I guess that doesn't matter. We just hate women. Our criticisms of the film just don't count. Everything that we say, everything that we point out, all the things that we highlight, doesn't matter. We just hate women. Let us say that somebody came to you and said, Brown Table, I hate this film because it shows incredible disrespect to the established uh, MCU. For instance, in the first Avengers movie, Nick Fury explicitly tells the Avengers that it was Thor's arrival on Earth that revealed humanity was not alone in the universe, that it was Thor who clued S.H.I.E.L.D. in on the threat that potential alien life has on the safety of humanity. I'd like to know why S.H.I.E.L.D. is using the Tesseract to build weapons of mass destruction. Because of him. Me. Last year, Earth had a visitor from another planet who had a grudge match that leveled a small town. We learned that not only are we not alone, but we are hopelessly, hilariously outgunned. My people want nothing but peace with your planet. But you're not the only people out there, are you? And you're not the only threat. But in Captain Marvel, this is completely retconned. In Captain Marvel, it, it's Carol Danvers and the Skrull who landed upon Earth that clued S.H.I.E.L.D. into this whole alien life business. Now, this is only one example of many, but one that should be simple to grasp, even for you. You would expect the people who were in charge of making Captain Marvel the directors and the writers, da 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 da, that if they knew they were tasked with creating a film that takes place prior to most of the events of an already established, and richly so, cinematic universe, that they would go through and watch all the movies, and they would get the reference material on point, and they would know the details, because millions and millions and millions of dollars are being poured into the staffing, and into the production, and into the marketing of this film. You would expect... Right? That they would have some kind of a grasp on what they were trying to create. Instead, it seems like they just didn't care. Captain Marvel is constructed as if from people who knew nothing about the fact it was part of a previously established universe. With characters and events and a timeline. Were they lazy? Were they incompetent? Were they simply... Uh, did they not care? I don't know. Myself. I can't say. But if you have the MCU as it is, with its millions of gajillions of fans, people who care about the characters and the lore, then releasing a film that takes a dump on it probably is going to make people upset. And this has nothing to do with Captain Marvel's gender. Nothing to do with it. So do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's a simple concept, but quite un Let's actually watch. This deleted scene. Let's watch this video. My excitement is unmeasurable. So Captain Marvel is minding her own business here, uh, just reading this map, and then uh, we get a just get a douche. That's probably a bit much, but either way, you should probably not call him that until there's something in the scene that would lead to that assessment. And for the sake of simplicity, for this video, I will not be giving the Don the proper true reverence that he really is owed. Those regulars who listen to my podcast with Mahler, EFAP, know all about the greatness that is the Don. His tragedies, his unwavering generosity, his kindness, his benevolence, his most pure and most wonderful of smiles, merchant of joy, benefactor of orphans, I truly cannot do him justice in only these short words, yet hopefully this will encourage all the more of you to watch our podcast so that you too may come to learn of his most caring nature. Go to Mueller and check out all of the podcasts that have been uploaded there. We just finished our 50th episode, a 24-hour live stream. It was magical. We'd love to see you there. In fact, it was on EFAP that we first discovered this video and covered it, but I felt like it was worthy of another look from myself personally. Um, I'm saving this video. I might make a fucking response to it. <laughs> this I'm, is I'm insane. Actually, this is absolute, because I, I hadn't this seen this part of it. But... Nice scuba suit.
All right. Yeah, starts off with a compliment. Okay. You need a ride, darling? And, uh... How about a smile for me, huh? All right. Um, I guess he starts flirting with her a little bit. Um, ask her for a smile. Okay. All right. Well, all right. Guess he's um, interested in her. Thinks she's pretty. Wants to hook up, you know, flirting. Sexual harassment. Okay. He's Sexual harassment. Little, uh, okay. Whoa! <laughs> Sexual harassment, you fucking asshole. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what is with these harassment. people? Imagine imagine filing this with the police. It's like, I'd like to file sexual harassment. It's like, all right, can you tell me what the aggressor did? He's like, well, he called my spacesuit a scuba suit. And they're like, okay. He asked if I would like a ride. And I declined. And then he, he said he wanted a smile. I'm like, all right, just tell me where he sexually harassed you, ma'am. Why? Like, what, what are you talking about? But that, but that was it. Uh. You know, there are people out there who are legitimately sexually harassed. Not just women, but men too, you know. Maybe you're doing them a bit of a disservice by slapping this label so casually onto things. He's flirting. He's, he's trying to, he's, he's doing pickup things. He's just flirting with her in public, in broad daylight, with people around. It's a dude on a bike, a handsome dude, riding a motorcycle. See, he's a pretty lady. Isn't Brie Larson's not ugly, you know? She's a pretty lady. He's just, he's just flirting with her. These people want to destroy social interaction. If this constitutes sexual harassment, then dating is fucked. Guys picking up gals, it's not gonna happen. Men have been approaching women for the purpose of courtship since time immemorial. This is not some patriarchal, oppressive act that puts down the woman. What the Don is doing to Carol Danvers in this scene is just flirting. That's all. He's just flirting with her. You can argue how awkward it is or how charming it is. That's subjective. But maybe we shouldn't be so quick to slap sexual harassment on something that's so harmless as this. And if you are going to call this of all things sexual harassment, I don't know, there's this little inkling of doubt in my little doggy heart that maybe this will not be a standard that is withheld evenly if the genders were reversed in this scenario. Judging from this video and where it goes, I don't know. People call me the Don. God. You're gonna give me your jacket, your helmet, and your motorcycle, and in return, I'm gonna let you keep your hand. So that's the scene. That's what people are fighting each other about. Wait a second. That's not right. I can smell dishonesty ten miles away, brownie boy, and my doggo senses are tingling, and it's not a boner. I checked. You cut out a few parts of that scene. You deleted parts of that deleted scene. I know, it ain't right, it ain't natural. Here's how the scene really went down. Nice scuba suit. You need a ride, darling? How about a smile for me, huh? A smile? Yeah. I'm offering to help you. The least you could do is give me a smile. How about a handshake? <laughs> I'm Veers. People call me... The Don. Wow. <laughs> Here's a proposition for you. <clears throat> You're gonna give me your jacket, your helmet, and your motorcycle, and in return, I'm gonna let you keep your hand. Take it! What, no smile? Yeah, that's basically the end of the scene right there. Uh, she, oh, she steals some clothes, but that is nothing compared to what she does before this. Um, pretty easy to see why fans of the MCU especially would have a huge problem with the prominence that they're trying to give to Captain Marvel and the power that she has in the story and how she's being pushed. A guy walks up to her in public, flirts with her, she offers him a handshake. That's a part that you cut out of your video. Captain Marvel offers him a handshake. 
He accepts the handshake happily. She tells him her name. He tells her his name. And then when he tries to pull away, she will not let him pull away. The Don's confused. She uses her space magic god powers to torture him extort him for his property, threatens to dismember him if he doesn't hand over his stuff to her. He obliges out of the sheer pain of it, and with a smug smile, she mocks him. Patriarchy defeated. Captain Marvel is a hero. This is the newly introduced most powerful person in the MCU. This is who they wanted to lead the Avengers? Carol Danvers. This psychopath. Can you see why people who are invested in the Avengers, invested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, invested in these characters, would be really, really upset that this is the character that's being pushed to be the apex, to be the top of the heap, to be the leader, to be the face of the MCU? But of course you cut out the part where she offers him the handshake, where they exchange names, where he smiles just at the chance to shake her hand, where he tries to pull away and she will not let him. Because this man, the Don, this foolish mortal, dared to annoy a god. As a guy, if I had superpowers and a dude came up to me and would be like, hey, you want to ride? <laughs> if I can shoot laser beams out of my hands, that guy would be toast. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I must have heard something because I, I thought you said something that was insane that nobody would ever say ever. L let's listen to that again. I, I'm sorry. As a guy, if I had superpowers and a dude came up to me and would be like, hey, you want to ride? <laughs> if I can shoot laser beams out of my hands, that guy would be toast that's because you're a psychopath that's yeah that's because you're a fucking psycho total homophobe come on <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true that's true a homophobic psychopath. Dare we can be boy i can't believe he's like okay with this <laughs> if a guy walked up to me and was like even if they were overt about it like they were like hey do you, you want to fuck i'd be like um i'm all right instead of fucking killing him <laughs> Just to be glad he doesn't have a gun then, because he doesn't need superpowers to obliterate someone. If he doesn't like somebody say that, you can just shoot him dead on the street if he lives in, well, California or wherever. I, don't know, I, wish, California, but... I wish the Don would ask me for a ride. Absolutely. I often wonder if these kinds of people think it's even acceptable at all to flirt. If the concept of somebody approaching somebody else in public for the purposes of starting a relationship or a fling, do they think it's inherently immoral? that it's unjust or in and of itself harassment? I don't know. I am trying to wrap my head around it. I can't imagine my own life minus the talking to strangers bit. I've worked in jobs before that have relied almost entirely around the idea of working with strangers. I've been a valet, a concierge, a bellhop, a restaurant server. I've worked in a banquets department. I've even worked with animals doing shows. But how does this guy think that courtship works. These people who so instantly demonize the concept of flirtation, is no guy ever supposed to approach a woman ever? If so, when is it acceptable? What is allowed? What are the rules? Is the concept of courtship itself something that should be done away with? How does he think people meet? Does he think that everybody just lives on Twitter? My parents met in college, and if they hadn't, I wouldn't be here. If you're listening to this, your parents met somehow, probably as strangers, and boom, now you're here. The survival and the propagation of the species relies on guys approaching gals. That doesn't mean that it's always fine the way it's done, right? That's not what I'm saying. I mean, the idea is that women should take more initiative, maybe, to approach guys? Is, is that the, the women empowerment angle here? I'm fine with that. Sure, why not? Most women seem to prefer men who show initiative themselves, who show drive, who show motivation and confidence. These are the things that are instantly displayed when a guy approaches a woman, especially a stranger. Chicks, to my experience, they dig that. And you know what? I love it when guys approach me. Lots of women love it when a random guy comes up to them because he sees her as desirable, valuable, alluring, beautiful. It is its own inherent compliment. 
Now, obviously, a guy can be a total asshole about it. I'm not saying that's good or that it should be done. And I'm certainly not saying that literally all women like it when they're approached by men and asked out or, or, or want to go on a date or want to flirt or anything like that. Obviously, hashtag not all. And generally, if you do approach a woman, or hell, if you approach a guy and he acts like an asshole back to you when you're just innocently asking for a date or to go out or to grab a coffee or to have lunch or anything like that, if she responds to that in a certain way, normally the warning signs go off that this chick's a fucking cunt anyway and you just dodged a bullet. If we take this deleted scene here from Captain Marvel, you have a guy and you call him a douche, I don't see it. He just comes across as a nice guy to me who wants to flirt with Carol Danvers. You don't know anything about him. He seems like a nice guy, honestly. He smiles, accepts a handshake, wants to help. You, you might say he's a little cringy. Sure, this movie does take place in 1995, though, for what that's worth. He's confident, handsome, he's got a nice bike, seems nice, friendly. I would feel incredibly confident in myself if he had walked up to me and started flirting. Fuck, I wish a guy like this would walk up to me and ask me for a ride. Jeez, I'd ride the Don like a wild stallion. But rags, I already hear, the objection from the White Knights ready at a moment's notice to protect the precious Captain Marvel at all costs and regardless of context. That is just your feelings, they will say. You might love the idea of being approached and flirted with, but not everybody likes that. All right, I, I understand. The objection here, let's address it, because it's a fucking shitty one. Let's take the scene in the film. Carol Danvers knows that she is in absolutely no danger from this random guy. She knows that she has complete and total dominating power over pretty much everybody on this planet. She has special cosmic space god powers. Also, keep in mind that this scene here on Earth takes place after the scene in which she is captured by the Skrull and then breaks out of her containment. These scenes show how incredibly resilient Carol Danvers is to harm. In her fight, she can get smacked right in the face by an adult male Skrull. Doesn't even bother her! Hey, after that in the same fight, ah, you just smack her in the back with your taser stick. She doesn't give a fuck. Hell, it takes two of the things held to her back to just slow her down for a little bit. Man, she is unstoppable, the kind of punishment she can take. And remember, all of this happens before she meets the Dawn, so she's fully aware of her ability to just shrug off damage. She knows that the Dawn couldn't hurt her if he tried. And why would he? Yeah, you might argue that he's being flirtatious in a cringy way, but he's being nothing but kind and offering to help her. And the Dawn approaches her, in public, other people are around, broad daylight. What is a more ideal location to be flirted with if you're nervous about that kind of thing what place would you rather this be and we know just how much confidence she has and how unafraid she is because she is the one who instead offers him the handshake and then she doesn't let him disengage she is the one who ensures that he's in a position where she can torture him and extort him for all of his possessions i don't know I feel like Captain Mar- it's like The Last Jedi, man. People just abandon all reason. They abandon all logic and all rationality because product must be defended at all cost. And you know, if you are somebody who just loathes the idea of being approached in public, well, I don't know what to say, man. I understand if you might not like the idea of random people coming up to you and flirting with you. But how exactly are you going to stop that? I mean, you could dye your hair blue and gain 100 pounds and wear a this-is-what-a-feminist-looks-like t-shirt. Sure, I I'm sure that'll work. But when you go out in public, and especially if you're attractive or you are interesting or there's something about you that people could find alluring, then it's just a natural consequence of being in public with other people in a society that some will approach you and some will be attracted to you and some will ask you out on a date, and they might want to initiate the start of what could become a relationship. It is just a consequence of being out in public. It is human nature at its most base and natural form. And if you don't like it, if you don't like guys approaching you, then just tell them you're not interested. Just, hell, come up with a, a little white lie to ease him away. 
I'm, I've got a fiance or I've got a boyfriend or I'm waiting on somebody or I'm not ready to date right now or just tell them that you appreciate it. Tell them that you really do appreciate the interest and it's flattering, but just tell them you aren't interested and that's all you have to do. It, it's just as simple as that, guys. This idea that we have to go out into the real world and find reasons for ourselves to exercise violence against one, eno one another for these, these things, it, it boggles my mind. You see it, it kind of relates to the last video I did. You see it with people saying, yeah, I like the idea of throwing milkshakes at people. Fuck, yeah, j assault people in public because they have opinions I don't like. Or, this guy's wearing a MAGA hat, I'm going to beat the shit out of him. What's up with this? this? This desire that certain people have to want to exercise violence against others. Is Brown Table trying to express some kind of a fantasy that he has in his head? Where if he's approached by someone, that if somebody flirts with him, that he's going to react with violence? And not only violence, but annihilation against them? I don't know anything about Brown Table and his personal life, but... Man, it's like, have you ever been in like a healthy relationship? Have you ever flirted? Have you ever engaged in like sexual contact with anyone else like this isn't right man what you're saying is fucking loopy you really do come across as a psychopath here's a cool idea i know really crazy and i know i'm supposed to be the evil bigot racist sexist nazi alt-righter white supremacist blah 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 all the things i'm called for no fucking reason but maybe maybe we should reserve the use of violence against other people for when it's like the last option, when it's absolutely necessary. Maybe if somebody approaches you, maybe you should talk to them, use words instead of resorting instantly to violence against them. Try this in the real world and see what happens. If someone flirts with you and you punch them, yeah, that's a good way to get your ass beat and then get thrown in jail. I don't know, it, maybe it's related to this whole bash the fash attitude that's cropped up. Where everyone's a fascist, everyone's a Nazi, everybody's a blah blah blah, and we have to go out and we have to punch them. And if uh, lots of innocent people get punched and assaulted and beaten up in the process, well, that's just, uh, that's just necessary collateral damage. You know, the, the idea that someone deserves to have violence done against them because they flirted with you, I, I don't know, man. That's something a psychopath would say. I don't think that you'd actually do it, Brownie. I don't think you'd actually do it. You don't come across as the type who has that kind of confidence, quite frankly. But, man, just the fact that it's the fantasy in your head, that's kind of fucked up. Let's go to Twitter. Uh, no, don't go to Twitter. And, uh... <laughs> so Joey Salads is, like, pretty much the... Pretty much the what? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Who are these people? on the screen. I don't, what? This is great. Marvel has created the worst, most unlikable hero ever. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably. I, I think it's pretty safe to say that for a lot of people, Captain Marvel is the most unlikable hero in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I can't think of a more unlikable hero. Hell, I can't think of a more unlikable villain. The writers for Captain Marvel just said, hey, she's snarky, smug, and she's a fucking asshole. But, hey, she's a woman, so that means it's character, right? This is, this is what they mean by a strong female character, right? I don't know. I feel like I have landed in Bizarro World, and I do not understand why these people in this upside-down land like Captain Marvel and are defending Captain Marvel. I just don't understand what people see in this character. Of all the things that you could defend, is is Captain Marvel? Is that what you couldn't defend? Did you watch the scene? She threatens to dismember a guy, and she steals his shit because he fucking flirted with her. How the hell are people defending this? I, I, I understand why the NPC meme exists. He's like, we have to defend The Last Jedi. We have to defend Captain Marvel. They, they must be defended against all rational thought, against everything, no matter what is on the screen, no matter what she does, we must protect Captain Marvel. And you know the whole hero thing that you said? Oh, hero? Yeah, first off, pro tip to YouTubers, the random, sudden, loud-ass noises in your video, don't do those. They, 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 they add nothing to your video. This is a trend that needs to die. Do not do it. If someone says you should do it, ignore them. Anyway, yeah, this was a Marvel thing.
But yeah, they put it in one of their trailers, and there it is. Joey Salads didn't come up with this. That was Marvel. That was Disney. If you have a problem with it, then, I mean, that's on them. Sorry, I don't find the hero of the film likable. When she nearly rips off a person's hand and steals his stuff because he's a jerk-off. Um, yeah, that about sums it up. The, you know, the scene isn't exactly, like, marinating in metaphor. You know, she, she very explicitly does some things to a dude that make her look monstrous. She didn't rip his hand off, dude. She, she just, like, twisted it. Oh, okay. She, she just twisted it. Oh, all right. Wow. Look at these two characters. Look at them. Look at what Carol Danvers is capable of. Her hands are her weapons. Her weapons are her hands. The cosmic space god powers from her hands are what she uses in combat. And don't ask me how she aims them. When she is captured by the scroll, they make sure to encase her hands in these containment cylinder thingies so she can't just blast them all right there. But after escaping, when she eventually does break them off, the magic blasts cause the outside of the spaceship she's on to break open and vent into space. The blasts from her hands are her deadly weapons. This is no different than somebody threatening you with a gun. She is using deadly weapons to inflict pain in order to torture somebody into compliance in order to steal his property. Why? Because she wants it. Simple as that. She wants his stuff. She doesn't ask him. She coerces him with torture. This is what villains do. This is what bad people do. I want your stuff. I am powerful. Therefore, I am going to take your stuff. Because might makes right. When this happens in any other film, it is a villainous act of cruelty. But when Captain Marvel does it, people like Brownie Boy defend her, and then, hell, they take a step further. They make excuses for her. America deserved 9-11, dude. Fuck it. Nah, go away. Imagine if the genders were reversed. Imagine if it was Thor walking down the street, and a girl had flirted with him, and he decided he'd take out Mjolnir and... I don't know, give her a little zap with lightning and say that she had to turn over all of her stuff so that he could have it. I highly doubt that Brown Table here would be defending Thor and making excuses for Thor. But hey, as long as a woman is doing it to a man, it's okay. She has carte blanche to do whatever she pleases, I guess. After all, she is fighting against the patriarchy. She is rising up against oppression. She didn't rip his hand off, dude. She, she just, like, twisted it. Yeah, guys, she only twisted it. I mean, we don't have any previous established level of her power, right? What she can do with her hands? <laughs> Even taking into the account the fact that she has metal around her arms? Holy shit. That's, oh, man. Imagine what she could do to a mere mortal man. Now, even though it didn't happen, because we have the movie to look at that tells us exactly what happened, let's say, hypothetically, she had indeed just twisted his hand a little bit. I mean, yeah, it was enough to make a fully grown adult male, without question, give her what she wanted, just so the pain would go away. But, would that make it okay? Would that make it alright? Is that a proper response to somebody flirting with you? on the street? Do you think that is a proportional response to what the Don did? Do you, Bronte? I'd be so curious to just pick your brain and see what insanity lies inside. And you know, there's actually another scene during her escape here that makes your defense of her even more freaking ludicrous. Hey. <laughs> Carol Danvers inflicts torture and extortion upon a guy for innocently flirting with her and will not let him disengage when she offers him a handshake. These two scroll were just moments ago responsible for her weird torture brain manipulation after she was captured, and she doesn't do anything to them. I'm not saying she should, but it does create this odd kind of disconnect. What, what it, what's going, how does she decide who gets torture and who doesn't exactly? How does she figure that the Don deserves it? 
and those two don't. Well, the two scroll aren't any threat to her, that's pretty obvious. But neither was the Dawn. Maybe it's just because the Dawn had things that she wanted, and she was going to take them by force. Maybe the scroll didn't have anything that would be useful to her. Do you see why so many people don't really connect at all with this character and think she's rather villainous and inconsistent? Are all the puzzle pieces starting to form a beautiful, elaborate image of a piece of shit? This is an adequate response, I feel, by uh, my friend Jonathan Burdett. It's from Films and Stuff. Go check it out. It's great. Ah, a film guy on YouTube. Someone who does a lot of critical analysis of media. Then his take here should really show how critically he examines the scene and how well thought out his arguments are. I mean, because there's no way that you would speak so highly of him and then do the man the disservice of showing an incredibly stupid, foolish, and not at all thought out tweet that makes him come across as a moron. You wouldn't do that to your buddy, right? Let's not forget Thor being a would-be warmonger, or Doctor Strange refusing patience to keep his perfect record, or Rocket Raccoon being a self-sabotaging asshole, or Peter Quill compromising a mission to brutally kill dudes to get his Walkman. Ah, look at you. Look at that precious face. You are so, so proud of this tweet you found. You think that your retarded friend came up with something that was even approaching a decent argument. And the fact you think that is so, so precious. Oh, I can't believe it. This, this, this buddy of yours, he's, he's a film critic? He, an he analyzes film? And this is his defense? Man, what what an incredible condemnation of your buddy. He, I think you owe him an apology for making him look like an idiot in front of tens of thousands of people. The idea that your buddy presents here, that these four characters are portrayed similarly to how Carol Danvers is treated, that is bafflingly stupid. Quite frankly, I am disappointed by what I wouldn't even call amateur observations. Let us begin from the top. Thor being a would-be warmonger is treated very negatively by the film. It's essentially the kickstarter for the whole plot for Thor's first movie. It's a fundamental part of his character growth that he learns from and grows out of. He's explicitly presented to be in the wrong by the film and Odin banishes him from Asgard because of it. Thor being the way that he begins is bad and he changes and grows because of it. You've done what you've started. I was protecting my home. You cannot need to protect your friends. How can you hope to protect the kingdom? Get into the healing room. No! There won't be a kingdom to protect if you're afraid to act. The Jotuns must learn to fear me, just as they once feared you. That's pride and vanity talking, not leadership. You've forgotten everything I taught you. But a warrior's patience. While you wait and be patient, the Nine Realms laugh at us. The old ways are done, you'd stand giving speeches while Asgard falls. You are a vain, greedy, cruel boy! And you are an old man and a fool! Yes. I was a fool. To think you were ready. Doctor Strange is also presented as flawed, egotistical, and narcissistic at the beginning of his first film, who doesn't have a real grasp on what is important in life. He is presented as being wrong. He's presented to be flawed. When he journeys to Kamar Taj, he's told explicitly by the Ancient One that he's got some flawed personality traits, and he needs to expand his perspective. Over the course of the movie, he does learn to grow out of this. But even from the onset, it's pretty clear that he's got some issues. This isn't the end. There are other things that can give your life meaning. Like what? Like you. And this is the part where you apologize. This is the part where you leave. Fine. I can't watch you do this to yourself anymore. Not too difficult for you, is it? Yes, it is. It breaks my heart to see you this way. No, don't pity me. I'm not pitying you. Oh yeah, then what are you doing here? Bringing cheese and wine like your old friends going for a picnic? We are not friends, Christine. We were barely lovers. But you just love a sob story, don't you? Is that what I am to you now? Poor Stephen Strange, charity case. He finally needs me, another dreg of humanity for you to work on. Patch him up and send him back into the world, hearts just humming. You care so much, don't you? Goodbye, Stephen. 
Rocket Raccoon is the most broken and flawed of the Guardians of the Galaxy. He is indeed self-destructive. And his greed and avarice, his ability to really convey his emotions, to form attachments to others, to treat his friends properly, it causes real issues with the films that he's in. He's extremely conflicted. From the onset of Guardians Volume 2, it's the greed of Rocket who steals the batteries from Sovereign that causes them to attack the Guardians and destroy their ship. And the other characters constantly criticize him for the behavior that he takes. This is not presented as a good character trait for him to have. He's not virtuous for these aspects of who he is. The hell you doing, boy? I can tell by how you talked about him. This ego's <sighs> bad news. We're here to save Quill. For what? Huh? For honor? For love? No, I don't care about those things. I want to save Quill so I can prove I'm better than him. I can lord this over him forever. <laughs> what are you laughing at me for? Uh, you can fool yourself and everyone else, but you can't fool me. I know who you are. You don't know anything about me, loser. I know everything about you. I know you play like you're the meanest and the hardest, but actually you're the most scared of all. Shut up! I know you steal batteries you don't need, and you push away anyone who's willing to put up with you, cause just a little bit of love reminds you how big and empty that hole inside you actually is. I said shut up! I know them scientists what made you never gave a rat's ass about you! I'm serious, dude! Just like my own damn parents who sold me, your own little baby into slavery! I know who you are, boy! Because you're me. <laughs> what kind of a pair are we? Moving on to Peter. Gosh, what does this guy say? That he compromises a mission to brutally kill dudes to get his Walkman. All right. First off, Peter doesn't kill any of them. Goes back onto the ship, goes through the hatch, they all grab their weapons, and one by one he just stuns them and they fall to the floor. As getting stunned has a tendency to do to somebody. There's even the guy at the end that he hits, and he's not completely subdued by the blast, so he hits him a second time. Now, you might make the case that he could have been potentially lethal to the last guy who actually had his Walkman, though I think that's really stretchy. Also important to note that this character that he smacks upside the head with a Yorb is a character who had displayed that the guards who work at this prison not exactly the nicest blokes in space. This is a terrible comparison anyway, since Peter is a hero in a much more non-traditional sense. He's very morally dubious, as are the Guardians in general. They aren't typically what you would call role models. Remember, it was the victory in the first Guardians movie that secured them a pardon. I certainly wouldn't call his motivations here and his actions here evil. He is retrieving property that does belong to him from people who were cruel to him, and he does it in a non-lethal way. Both of the volumes of Guardians of the Galaxy stress the incredible emotional significance that this Walkman in particular has to Peter Quill. This is an amoral aspect of it. It simply functions to tell the viewers that this is the reason why he acts this way when the Walkman is involved. We get absolutely nothing of the sort to explain why Captain Marvel acts in the way she does to the Dawn. From memory, because it's been a while since I saw the first Guardians movie, I didn't remember if he killed him. I didn't think he did. So I just went online and I watched the scene again to make sure. It's not that difficult. You have all of the tools available at your disposal as much as you want to make correct assessments of scenes and films. If it is your job, if you're known for analyzing films and scenes, maybe you should watch the scenes to make sure that you don't incorrectly state things about those scenes, thinking that you're making a really good point against somebody else. I've gone on and on, which is my thing, I guess, to essentially elaborate this point. All of these characters and the way that have been presented are in their flawed state that they either learn from and grow out of, or exist in a context that shows that what they do isn't anything at all like what Carol Danvers does to the Don. What Danvers does to the Don is purely malicious, unnecessary of an act that she pulls off with sarcasm when absolutely no threat was made to her. And in fact, the opposite was true. And yet it is Carol Danvers who is portrayed as someone to be emulated and imitated. 
And Carol does not learn nor grow from this experience. She is presented as the hero, and her arc is essentially that she was right all along, and that this action of hers was not flawed or immoral. This tool is attempting to defend Captain Marvel by one big whataboutism, trying to imply that if you don't like what Carol Danvers does here, then you can't like these other characters and stay consistent. And that's just flat out wrong now, isn't it? He's right. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying everybody who hates this scene is a sexist, because that's dumb. Yeah, but why break from tradition? And he did sort of poison the well at the beginning of this video by, you know, saying that. But I do think that everybody who hates this scene would hate Wolverine. Wolverine is such a villain. <sighs> All right, how am I going to go about Okay. Let's say you're making a video. You got your Vegas Pro open or whatever your software you're using. And you're going through the video and you need a clip. I need a clip, a, a video clip to go here over my narration. So what do you do? You go to YouTube, type in what you need to find, what scene. So that's a Wolverine um, bar scene, X-Men uh, 2000. All right, load that up. Oh, look, this looks what I need right here at the top. Find something new, honey? You're sticking with water. Huh, this looks like what I need. And it's got the whole scene, too. It has the little snippet that I want to use, but it also has all of the context surrounding it. Now I just drag this into the timeline, and we should be golden. Mutant issues should be the primary focus of what is, on the surface at least, a strictly diplomatic affair. You owe me some money. Come on, let's do it. Not do this. No man takes a beating like that without a mark to show for it. Come on, buddy, this isn't going to be worth it. You lost your money. You keep this up, you lose something else. Look out! Oh shit, this guy behind him pulled out a knife. He was gonna try to kill Wolverine. Gosh, it, so Wolverine in this scene was acting in self-defense because he was about to get shanked by a dude with a knife. How, Brown Table, in the hell did you go through all the trouble of all that shit looking up the video, you're saving it, you're dragging it, you scroll through the video to make sure it has the part where Wolverine's pointing his claws at some dude's throat, and you just, did you just ignore this part? Did you just act like this doesn't exist? This isn't anything like the Captain Marvel scenario. Well, what did you do? You just put this in your video and hope to yourself, ah, oh, fuck honesty, who needs it? Uh, no one probably remembers this scene from a movie from 19 years ago. Wolverine's pointing his claws at somebody. It's just, just the same as Captain Marvel. People can't like them both because they're exactly the same. A dude smiles and shakes the hand, which was offered to him, of Captain Marvel's. Wolverine was defending himself from a dude who was about to stab him and try to kill him. You have to be insane if you think that these two are comparable. You just threw this shit in your video, in your shitty fucking video, and you thought, ah, oh, no one's gonna check. Ah, oh, they won't remember. I'm just gonna ignore completely the context of the scene that's happening here. I have a narrative that I want to push. I have a point that I want to make. And if reality gets in the way, well... I guess maybe we can do our best to bend reality a little bit. After all, my narrative is far more important than what's real. Fuck you, dishonest prick. Right, Tim Pool? Whoa, I never saw this clip, but damn, Captain Marvel is a villain. She straight hurts and robs a dude because he was a jerk to her. That's a villain. Um, yeah, the Beanie Man is correct. You know, this would have never happened if Captain Marvel was never sexually harassed. Whoa! Brownie, this isn't sexual harassment. If you think this is sexual harassment, it has cheapened the term to be basically worthless. He asked her for a ride, which coincidentally, yeah, she could have used a ride. That would have, that would have been very helpful, absolutely. And he asked her for a smile. He asked her for a smile. That's not sexual harassment. He is casually flirting with her in public, in broad daylight, with people around. 
None of this is justified. But you know what? Let's play the what if game. I love the what if game. I'm so fucking good at the what if game. What if we lived in the SJW clown world bizarro universe where these things would constitute sexual harassment? All right, let's imagine we're in that world. Now, for starters, you wouldn't be here watching this video because your would-be father would be thrown in the gulag for trying to date your would-be mother. He would be sharing a cell with someone who shared a Pepe meme on Twitter, which is where elections would be settled. The actions of the Don in Crazy Bizarro World would not warrant the response that Captain Marvel gives to him. He would not deserve to have his hand potentially broken, twisted, he wouldn't deserve to be shocked by her, and he certainly wouldn't deserve to have to be coerced with physical violence into handing over his property so that she could have it. Oh, and of course, let's not forget, Brownie, you're victim blaming, don't you think? The man was assaulted, he was tortured, coerced into giving up his property, robbed, and you're blaming him? Yeah, where does the robbery part fall into this? If someone sexually harasses you, you can just get their stuff? What? I agree, Sarah, Kamala's reactor. Woman, defends herself from a man harassing her. Men on Twitter, put her in jail, that shouldn't be allowed, she's evil. Oh man, what a what an incredibly stupid thing to say. Deflect and disengage. It's like listening to a child, these SJW types. It is frustratingly dishonest. There is a conversation to be had here, but instead, we see this. But it's typical, it's par for the course when it comes to the mind of the SJW, it's the typical tactic. Instead of engaging in a discussion, instead of addressing the points actually being made, instead of listening to what people are saying, instead, just completely make something up out of thin air and then criticize that. Why would you actually listen to what people are saying about the scene when you can simply pull some bullshit nonsense out of the ether and prop that up like the straw man that it is. It, it is so much easier to do that, after all. It's far easier than trying to defend the indefensible. If you actually had to get into a conversation with these people, which will never happen, they won't ever do that, they'll just make up a straw man on Twitter.com for their upvotes, you know these idiots would fold in a moment like a cheap card table. Nobody is saying that women shouldn't nor can't defend themselves when they're being harassed. No one's saying that. Well, maybe if you go to some crazy far fringes of some dark hole on some distant planet of the outer rim of the internet, you'll stumble across some crazy post from some nobody loser. Maybe you found that one guy out there and are propping up that weirdo as the opposition, which is only dishonesty of a different caliber. People don't have an issue with Carol Danvers defending herself. Our issue is obviously, obviously, with the proportionality of her response to this quote-unquote harassment. If somebody lightly touches your map and asks you to smile, you can't torture them and steal their property, especially after you make an offer of a handshake and they politely accept and then try to let go of you. Whoever this clown person is, Kamala's reactor, if I had said something this monumentally retarded, I would be, I would be ashamed of myself. This, if anything, acts as a friendly reminder to all of us that yes, people this incredibly stupid actually exist. They aren't just made up, they're real. And despite the incredible stupidity of the things that they say, there are other people who are stupid enough to prop them up on a pedestal as if they are beacons of wisdom. If you think these tweets are exaggerating, they're not. Because we just saw a tweet that said this exact same thing unironically. All right, we'll go through this slowly so that you can understand, Brownie. This is Tim Pool's tweet. Whoa, I never saw this clip, but damn. Captain Marvel is a villain. She straight hurts and robs a dude because he was a jerk to her. That's a villain. Now let's examine this tweet. Use your eyes, all right? Where in this tweet does Tim Pool say that Captain Marvel, or women, should not defend themselves, or that they are against women defending themselves, against harassment? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be insanely charitable, which I probably shouldn't do, because you're dumb, 
But I will do it anyway, because I am a magnanimous doggo. Truly man's best friend. If you are crazy enough to think that when Tim Pool says he was a jerk to her, that this means he's saying sexual harassment, that women... No, even then, I tried to be charitable, but this doesn't even work because you can't rob people who commit sexual harassment. <sighs> I tried. I, I tried. I tried. I gave it a, I gave it a try. I'll even keep this in. I'll, I'll even keep this take in. Fuck it. Tim Pool does not say that women cannot defend themselves. That, that's ludicrous. Absolutely insane. The whole idea here is about proportional response. If someone punches you, you can punch them back, right? If someone tries to kill you, you can kill them in self-defense. If somebody asks you to smile, you can't torture them and rob them, okay? I'm just... It's kind of baffling. I never would have imagined that I'm trying to explain the concept of you can't torture and rob people because they ask you to smile. Like, I, I assume a younger, more naive me would say, Oh, future rags. You, you, won't have to do, you won't have to make a video about that, because that's just obvious to everyone. Anybody with a functioning brain would know that. I just... People... <clears throat> Why am I having to explain this to adults? Let's read the replies. Yo! What a villain, bro! What?! He has a sword?! He's gonna attack him with a sword?! This dude is going to kill Indiana Jones with a sword! A sword's basic only function is to kill people! How can- how can people be this retarded? I don't understand- this video is getting demonetized because I keep saying retarded too much. But it- I- I gotta get it out of my system! I- I don't- I don't understand. I don't understand how people can be this stupid. A man is about to kill Indiana Jones with a fucking sword, and so he shoots the man with his gun so that the man with the sword doesn't kill him with the aforementioned sword. I don't understand. I don't get it. How can- how can so many people be this insanely stupid? I- it boggles the mind. It- it is- I don't even- I- Just the idea that you could compare these two and say they're the same thing is so astronomically batshit that I just- I- I cannot fathom the kind of stupidity. How do these people dress themselves in the morning? How, how do these people, like, operate a motor vehicle? How do they make breakfast without killing themselves? I don't understand. I just don't get it. Are you high? No, he's just a man. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, men are stupid. Judging you, but in Avengers. Hell is this? Captain Marvel, inspiring to lots of young girls. War on Twitter. I mean... Balances out. Right, first off, I don't care what little girls think. Little, let's, uh, okay. Oh, let me explain this to you. Children are retarded. Children are really stupid. We have to watch children to ensure that they don't kill and maim themselves on a daily basis. They have to put warning labels on empty plastic bags so that small children don't kill themselves with them. Kids are dumb. I just don't care if a little girl is inspired by Captain Marvel. You know how many little girls were inspired by Hitler? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm bringing up Hitler. You know why? Because it's a fucking amazing example of how the premise of this point you're trying to make is stupid. Terrible people can inspire others. That doesn't mean they're actually something that you should probably have children be inspired by or, or seek to emulate. Let me ask you this, Brownie. If, if you, God forbid, create Spawn one day, do you want your daughter to emulate somebody who is perceived to be and is touted to be virtuous because she tortures and robs somebody who asks her to smile. Is that something that you would want your daughter doing? I mean, what are you trying to say here? She's inspiring to little girls, so we shouldn't discuss the merits of the scene, or we shouldn't criticize the film, or what exactly are you trying to say here? We are arguing about a fictional film in which a woman can shoot lasers from her hands. A fictional film 
in which a woman... No, no, it's a real film. Oh, I hate this argument so much. <laughs> I hate this argument so much. I hate it. 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 I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I know, I know, I know yeah. But still, yeah. yeah. Yes, it is fiction. Duh, we all know that. But we're applying I'm real... Stop arguing about it. Doesn't matter. Me. Oh, well, 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 don't do that. <laughs> oh, I hate this shit. <laughs> like, go, 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 let him do it. Let him do it. Can shoot lasers from her hands. What's the next okay. argument going to be? Why is MJ still black? Brains hitting. Brains exploding. Help. I got it. So we, we just... <sighs> Captain Marvel's fiction. Also, MJ's black. <laughs> what is what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, what is wrong? Why did you make this video? What is... Don't you okay. think Spider-Man love Black MJ in MCU? It is atrocious, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a person whose uh, commentary we should definitely value. What the f- I didn't even read hey, that. Hey, Captain Marvel's not a real film. This isn't a real tweet. Don't worry about it. Why are you talking about it? Oh. I mean, it's all- All we're arguing about is fiction here, guys. Yeah, it's just Come fiction. On. It's just pixels on a screen, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I, Women aren't real. Like, I guess I guess we have to do it. We have to explain it. So, when a character commits to an action in fiction, we then judge it as if it was to take place in real life as to whether or not it was morally reprehensible or not. People online are saying it was absolutely justified. Other people are saying it's not. We get to discuss morals and ethics. And this fucking idiot is like, uh, it's not a real thing that happened. Well, yeah, but it is morally justified. Well... It, it, it... He morally justifies it and then says, oh, but it's fiction, so you, can, you know, why are you arguing about it? <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you a little nugget of wisdom. And this is for, this is for all of you guys watching. This is for Brown Table. This is for everybody. If you have a YouTube channel or a career that revolves around film criticism and film discussion, don't ask, why are we arguing about it? It's only a film. And it's not real. So before I go, I wanted to give you guys a quick rendition of what I think some of the people who don't like the Captain Marvel scene wanted to see on the big screen. So let's do it. <laughs> Are you sure this is acting round table? <laughs> I, can, I can imagine this is how you actually are. I should laugh. I should laugh, but I think I've earned it. I think I've earned myself a giggle. <laughs> what, what are these strange black symbols? What do they mean? <laughs> I should... Hey, baby. Need a, need a ride? Oh, hi. Can I use your motorcycle? Oh, sure, but only if I can give you a ride. Sure. Oh, 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 sure, sure. No problem. Awesome. I'm so happy to be sexually harassed in public and then exploit myself to get what I want. <laughs> oh. oh. I've already kind of discussed this a little bit, the whole assuming that other people think things they don't, or framing what other people are saying or thinking as something that it isn't. We, we've already discussed that, so I won't delve into it again, really. Plus, I don't want to linger on this too long, because I feel, I feel secondhand embarrassment from having watched this. So instead, let me give you just a quick idea of what I think they should have done. Now, obviously... If I had power to control the scenes of Captain Marvel, we would have scrapped the entire thing and started fresh. Because it's just so, so awful. But, let us imagine an alternative scene. Alright. What would I have rather seen? Hmm. How about neither Danvers nor the Don was the villain, nor Hateworthy? That's a, that's a novel concept. Maybe a scene where a handsome guy comes up to a lovely lady, flirts with her a bit, but she's polite in her response. But firm that she's maybe seeing somebody, or or that she's traveling. That'd be nifty, because it's true, you know? Maybe they could have the Don be around for a larger... The Elch. Ah, fuck it, it's staying in. A larger part of the film, sort of giving him some 
uh, back and forth with her so he so so he could be like the vehicle that she uses to learn about Earth and the strange new culture. You could probably throw in some jokes there. Uh, maybe they both learn a little something from one another. Yeah, because they're from two different worlds and they see things differently. Maybe she does get a ride from him someplace. Or maybe he makes some passing comment that he thinks is innocuous, but she takes to heart like it like it reminds her of something from her past. Maybe it awakens some kind of, of, of a memory because she's, lose, she's lost that seven years or so in her mind. Maybe the Don and her sort of hit it off and she actually likes him, but it turns out that he's been a scroll the whole time and she gets trust issues because of it. Um, maybe... If you wouldn't have had to make Nick Fury into a bumbling, stupid goofball for comedy relief, you could have had the Don be like that. Maybe he's, like, tough and rough on the exterior, but on the inside, he's a he's a big softy, and he's really emotionally mature and stable, and he's sensitive. This is something like that. All in all, what we wanted from this scene is just anything reasonable from Danvers. It's more her than anything else. It would have been nice to see her just carry on in a conversation or in an interaction with somebody without trying to be some kind of patriarchy-smashing, man-torturing, vehicle-thieving, holier-than-thou, self-righteous prick. If Danvers isn't going to learn or grow or have any kind of arc or change in the film, then she should be in some way relatable or admirable or, God forbid, likable in this scene. The idea that we want her to just accept sexual harassment and have people walk all over her? No, of course that's not what we want. What a, what an absolutely ridiculous thing for you to say. It makes no sense. That's how it is to these people, though. Oh, what's that? They'll say. You didn't like Carol Danvers torturing this guy for asking her to smile? Well, then, you just want her to be the victim. You just want her to let men roll all over her. You want her to be powerless and weak and never defend herself. Because it's, it's either one or the other with these people. There's definitely no middle ground. There's no reasonable area in the center that normal people might behave in. We're not saying that Carol Danvers can't be flawed. In fact, we would like that because it's interesting when characters have flaws or maybe bad aspects of themselves that they work to improve upon. But that's a separate issue entirely from the fact that the film, and as you show Brownie, the film's fans, treat her as if she can do no wrong when faced with such an incredibly cruel and indefensible attack on an innocent person. Uh, but then again, you don't really think that the Don is innocent, do you? You think he deserves what he got. And maybe that's just an even bigger issue. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was very fun to do, actually. It was very freeing, I think. Oh yeah, free of good arguments, free of consistent principles, free of standards. Free of honesty? It's something cool to not really have a script and just... Oh, man, ow. Uh, maybe you should, though. Maybe you should use scripts always, forever. We can't all be like the super cool doggo. I, I'm, I'm fluid in English. Because the words, they just flow out of my mouth like a, like a river. Yeah. Fuck it. So, if you like this format, Tell me if you like the format. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell, tell me in the comments. Uh, like the video if you liked it. Share the video if you can, please. That'd be, uh, that'd be fantastic. Well, I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. And I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Discord server, too. I'm trying to organize a second game night because we had one already. Not many people join. No, if you want to... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, look, look, he's tired he's tired of playing Francis on his own in Left 4 Dead, alright? It's, it's like it's like Dusty begging for so much. to the whole class. I can't I believe literally yeah. everybody has a bar mitzvah to go to. I invited all you sexist to my party. Why the fuck did you show up? Oh. <laughs> he had like Captain oh. Marvel running on repeat at the party. Like, oh. Come on, guys. Oh, so bad.
So that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming to the table. There is no table, but uh, you know. Thanks guys for coming to the table. I'll see you all next time.